the TV. Hey, you got my message. Good, good, good. That's good. That's good. Bonjour. So very quickly, I don't have a lot of time here. So listen, Gilbert, the strangest thing. Here's Corona. You're not going to believe what it is. I found it here, but it works. It works wonders. The strangest thing is. Hello? Good evening, everyone. This is post-production Gilbert. The date is January 22nd. <laughs> Over one month since we built the Hallelujah Sandwich 11, the COVID confection, which you will see in a few minutes. So here's what's gonna happen. 2020 was not an average year. So for 2020, we will not have an average Hallelujah Sandwich because travel is highly discouraged and all of our childhood friends are scattered all over the world. We will adapt to the spirit of the times and conduct this year's sandwich through Zoom. <laughs> After this, you'll see uh, every one of us filming themselves, either shopping their ingredients or showcasing their ingredients with two challenges in mind. Number one, they must somehow, some way, Make their sandwich 2020 themed. This year's been one hell of a roller coaster. It's <laughs> lot, plenty of material to make a sandwich out of. <laughs> and number two, they must include the strangest thing they find in the supermarket. Because as Poncho said, when he was stuck in the upside down, <laughs> the strangest thing cures Corona. I think that's what he meant. <laughs> Howdy guys, what's up? Uh, today is December 18th and it is time for the Hallelujah Sandwich part like 11 or something? I don't know. Due to unforeseen circumstances, I am in Matamoros, Tamaulipas for the year. Uh, I'm currently in Soriana in the cereal aisle. The theme I chose for 2020 is Tiger King. Uh, if you don't know, Tiger King was a series that was released on Netflix. It was pretty wild, took the world by storm. It came out like right after COVID. I want to say like late March, early April, something like that. Uh, so the whole world was watching and uh, Tiger King became very famous. Carol Baskins, that bitch Carol Baskins. For my first ingredient, as you may have guessed, we got some tucaritas because the mascot is a tiger. If you thought the sucaritas was an urgent idea, you're in for a doozy. For my next ingredient, I'm getting some Cheetos because the mascot is also a tiger. My sandwich is probably gonna be very crunchy. All right, I just thought that uh, there's an interesting word, salchichoneria. In English, it means like winery or sus sausagery. Kind of a last ditch attempt. Uh, I'm looking for a drink. Maybe to see if there's like cerveza el tigre or something like that. Worst case scenario, I'm gonna get like a michelada because it's red, tiger's blood. Um, call it a day. Just for the culture, this is what Sorana looks like. So after you pay, there's like all these little boutiques here. It's el China Express. 
lot of little like stands and stuff. It's that time of the year again where we make the Halloween sandwich, the 11th year. Halloween sandwich X1. 2020 has been an interesting year. And um, there's been a lot of things that impacted the a lot of events that impacted the world, and my sandwich is going to be theming themed after two of those events: COVID nineteen and the wildfire theme. The wildfire theme is going to be my first layer. It's going to have melted habanero gouda cheese with some jalapenos. The second layer is going to be in, in uh, the COVID nineteen layer. COVID nineteen has impacted the um, the world, the entire world, more than one country, out more than one country, and so I will be adding for the second layer. I will be adding uh, paella, uh, Spanish themed, and then I'll be adding carne milanesa, Mexican themed, and then I'll be adding this the strange. I will be adding this strange ingredient. It's goat cheese, sun dried tomato, and garlic. I've never seen this in the store before. I have no idea what it is. Well, it's goat cheese, obviously, but we'll see how it goes. Never tried it before. Kind of looks like sushi. This is uh, based off Italy. And then the third and final layer is going to be just a regular, um, going to be a normal layer with romaine lettuce, baby spinach, and houndsman light. We'll see how it goes. And we join up with the boys. Got pop tarts, jelly. I got a McRib and nuggets. You know, cause swine flu and bird flu. <laughs> um, honey ham, just cause a sandwich. Uh, I'm gonna make some eggs. Sweet braised barbecue, cause barbecue sauce, it's good. Bread, peanut butter. I just came back from the HEB, the Gucci B, as it's commonly called here in Brownsville. I picked up four items, the rest are at home. Namely, animal crackers, bacon, bread, Texas toast, and pork chops. <laughs> and we are back home. Uh, my idea for the sandwich is uh, to base it off of the 2020 election. It'll be a four layer sandwich with each layer being representative of either the candidates for president and their running mates. <laughs> Starting with uh, Mike Pence's layer, we'll have tuna. Man, oh, I forgot the mayonnaise. <laughs> and craisins. Uh, Donald Trump Slayer will have chicken and bacon. Uh, Kamala Harris's layer will have to settle for pita bread. And this was supposed to be Jamaican jerk chicken. I could have sworn Wings Up had Jamaican jerk chicken. This would have been my strangest ingredient, but alas, they do not. <laughs> um, instead, I had to go with the uh, Hawaiian chicken. Uh, Hawaii, Jamaica, they're islands. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> the president elects layer, Joe Biden, will have uh, pork chops and animal crackers. You will see why. Right, so here's what happened. Suddenly, out of nowhere, my roommate uh, came back to us one day and he said, hey, you know, like my brother uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Everyone here should probably go on quarantine, get tested, make sure everything's okay for a little bit. And so I'm kind of stuck at home, no way I have to get supplies or materials for Hallelujah sandwich. What am I to do? Imagine like me shopping at a grocery store, except the grocery store is actually just like my kitchen. So item number one, Sweet peas. Goes great on a sandwich. Tomato soup. Figure out how to include that. Mushroom soup for like texture, I guess. We do have peanut butter. Amazing. Um, this is a good one. All right, we have pasta. We also have, what is this over here? Some walnuts from a previous, I think, baking experience. What can I put on this thing? I don't have bread. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how to make bread or to put bread in this thing. Maybe I'll just borrow some bread from my roommates. Last but not least, Spanish rice. This is gonna be a shit show. All right, we got the ingredients lined up here. 
ready to go. Here's my little workstation. Merry Christmas. Um, let me let me present to you my idea. I made a chart of what's going to go into the sandwich. Um, anyways, I think the most important thing to realize is that I don't have bread. I need to get bread, and I'm going to borrow that from my roommates. That's step one. Um, we have three different layers of the sandwich that we're going to fill up with ingredients. These ingredients we already have, um, and I'm going to worry about this last ingredient. I think this this last one will be able to provide us some like structural support for the whole thing, making sure that everything stands up the way that we want it to, as well as allowing us to like fill this out with a little bit more protein and a little bit more veggies. I actually looked at my Uber Eats app and I picked the top five places that I ordered the most from. And I put it down on this list here. Top five places that I ordered in from during quarantine 2020. Burger King, Publitas Tacos, Shusi Stop, Virginia Ramen, Japanese Barbecue. We're going to try to narrow this down a bit more and just pick one so that we can put that in just this layer here. Number one is Burger King. Burgers, you know, it's just uh, burgers and fries. It's just going to be a burger within a sandwich. And I don't think that's kind of like what I'm looking for. Um, I want to spread it. I want to choose something different, essentially. So it's not just burger sandwich section. So we're just going to go ahead and cross that out. Publitas mm -hmm. Tacos. Now, that's a good option. They have some really good tacos as well as burritos that can possibly go in here. We'll keep that open for now. Sushi shop. Uh, sushi. More rice, more grain, a little bit of protein. Might be able to like stack it up in such a way that it could like sustain itself, have good stability. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and cross that out. Also, we have Jinya Ramen. Ramen is not going to go into the sandwich. Really well. I already had trouble finding a way to fit the soup. That's part of my sandwich. Cross that out. Now, Japanese barbecue. This is a pretty interesting one because it contains a couple different kinds of meat in the same order, as well as rice, which is kind of unfortunate, but it also comes with vegetables. So I'm very much leaning towards this one as our potential option. And I think I'm just going to bite the bullet and say, that's the one we're going to do. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? Do you want to see something ridiculously stupid? I couldn't find a candle for my tuna, so I had to use this thing, and I'm just like poking holes in it. <laughs> Yo, shout out and rip to our friend Robert. Yo, Robert. 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 Shout out Robert's Kidney Stone, number two. I just watched the uh, Mando. Bro, it's so good, oh man. It, that's, that's the most hype I've been since Darth Vader yeah. showed up and broke hey, one. Hey, hey, no spoilers, no spoilers. Hype, just in case. No yeah. spoilers, please. I'm still trying to catch up. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 11th. Yes, the 11th Alleluia Sandwich. Woo! X1. Yes, uh, X1. 2020 has been one hell of a year. We're doing this through Zoom just to fit the spirit of the times. <laughs> it's only appropriate. Uh, and because it's been an unusual year, our theme is to make it 2020 related. It, it opens to any and all interpretations. It, it, you could do, you could use something, some entertainment from the year, um, some current event from the year, or just based on 2020 itself. Anything related to the pandemic, COVID, social distancing, masks, anything is up for grabs. That being said, we have five. We have five people total uh, right now. Uh, everyone, everyone picked up their ingredients. Everyone has a strange ingredient because the strangest thing can defeat Corona. The light at the end of the tunnel is on the horizon. Now's the time to prepare and make our sandwiches. Go. Let's go. All right. X, X1. Let's let uh, Professor Jose show us his presentation. I'll, I will like the, happily the present this. Overview. Yeah, one minute overview. Ready? So this is a chart kind of like listing all the ingredients that are going to be going into my sandwich and in what layer they're going to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, my theme is just like whatever the hell I find on my cabinets because it's kind of like I'm stuck at home at the moment and I don't want to go out and see other people. Peanut butter, Spanish rice, and sweet peas for the first layer. Second layer, cream of mushroom, rotini pasta, and tomato soup. 
Last layer. Ready? Take out delivery to honor the Uber Eats warriors. Uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, quick yeah. shout out to Uber Eats, man. Um, <laughs> I have all my materials here ready to go and laid out nicely for me to just quickly prepare everything as I go, my dudes. My theme was, um, uh, yeah, just viruses. COVID apparently came from a bat or a pangolin. I couldn't find any bat or pangolin meat, so I had to throw it back a decade back. Yeah. To the swine flu, so that's what we got. This bad boy. The McGrib. The McGrib is back. Yeah, the McGrib is back, and this is also my strangest ingredient because Lord knows what's in. What's, allegedly, it's pork, but I don't know, man. It might be something else. <laughs> I, I got, I got the ham just in case, you know, because you know pork. Okay. Remember the um, the avian flu, the the bird flu, those things are oh, around. So I got some McNuggies. Uh, no barbecue sauce because it's the best condiment to pair all of these things together. And then I um, also wanted to include more more bird stuff, you know, with a little ham and egg layer. Mm. Then uh, people are allergic to uh, peanuts, so you know peanut butter <laughs> 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 that can kill too, man. I don't know. It's a pandemic. It's been yeah. a pandemic. <laughs> then there's some some jelly, you know, just for flavor, for some sugar, and um, some pop tarts because that's what I've been eating, and I just thought it was fitting because quarantine. So yeah, definitely definitely fitting. Nice. It, it's a doable. Oh yeah, here's. I'm about to set up, you know, a little cheese. I'm about to um, bake these things. You know, so yeah, here we go. All right. Hey. Yeah. The Javi. That's me. All right. So I'll I'll go through mine real quick. Oh, uh, the Tiger King. My theme. I I feel like one thing in 2020 that was like really popular for a while was the Netflix original series Tiger King. Absolutely. Um. It's, I, I like how these Hollywood sandwiches are kind of time capsule. Uh, yeah. that's, that, like, that was a really good way to put it, Gilbert. Just like yeah. all the themes of the times and our, our little lingo and like the memes that we talk about. So one of the big things in 2020 was Tiger King. Uh, it came out right after uh, quarantine started. So like everyone was looking for something to watch and it just took the world by storm. Um, Carol Baskins killed her husband, long story Absolutely. short. Uh, so because I'm doing the Tiger theme, <laughs> I, I just, warning, my sandwich is going to be very crunchy because I got some suka Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. Um, I also have, so if, as part of the show, they, um, the Tiger King, I forgot, but what was his name again? The dude? Uh, Tiger Joe King. Joe Exotic, I think. Joe, Joe Exotic, Exotic, yeah. yeah Joe, Joe Exotic, Exotic yeah. Exotic, uh, he buys expired or like about to expire meats from Walmart and that's how I see the tigers for the cheap. Oh. Um so ideally I would have gone to Walmart but I'm in Matamoros. So I almost I, I almost thought you said I almost thought you were gonna say that you bought expired meat. No, I would have <laughs> that would have been exciting. <laughs> little, little cameo here. Hola. Uh, and I, I got some bacon as well. I don't Hell know like yeah. what you feed tigers some some chicken some bacon. Uh, and to top it off, some Cheetos. I'm gonna put some Cheetos in my sandwich too. You know, <laughs> El Tigre right here. This is the uh, the Mexican Cheetos. Ah uh, yes, tortillitos. Tortillitos. Um, Yeah, yeah that's my sandwich. It's pretty simple. My my other ingredients. I look for like cerveza El Tigre or something like that. Some Tigre flavored drink. I uh, wasn't uh, able to find anything. So I'm gonna drink this Michelada because it's red and like blood. Tiger, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Kind of a stretch, like but that's, that's what it is. Yo, can tigers test positive for COVID? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. There was a tiger at the Bronx Zoo with COVID. That sucks, poor tiger. Yeah, yeah dude, that really sucks. The article that the tiger was, was randomly coughing, and the, the, the caretakers were like, what the fuck? So then they, 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 they stepped the, the swab up its nose, and it came out positive. I'm going to show my, my setup. Okay, so... Uh, I have two. I have two themes in my sandwich. This 2020 has been rough. Uh, my first layer is going to represent the wildfires. Oh, so oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. One layer is gonna be a bunch of spicy stuff. So I got some habanero gouda right here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Nice. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna have some del monte jalapenos in there too. Damn, solid, solid. My second layer is COVID-19. COVID-19 has impacted the world internationally. So I'm going to have different uh, foods from different from three different countries in there. Uh, so 
Uh, the second layer is going to have a paella in there. Okay. Spanish paella. And I have some, uh, some milanesa from Matamoros, Soriana. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna, I found this Italian goat cheese, which is my uh, random ingredient. Uh, it's sun-dried tomato and garlic flavor. Shout out to our Italian viewers out there. And the yeah, shout out to you guys. I'm going to try this out for the first time. I've never seen this in the store before, so let's see how it goes. And uh, so I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to melt it, and I'm going to put it on that on that um, international layer. And then for the third layer, it's going to be just a standard sandwich, uh, romaine lettuce and spinach and mayo, and I'm going to have some melted uh, stuff from this in there too. So I'm going to, so they're going to be in two layers. I want to point out that the countries that Abraham mentioned have been wrecked especially hard by the virus. Yeah, that's why I picked those specifically because they've been they've been ripped from COVID, dude. <laughs> what about you, Giggs? Okay, so my sandwich will be based on the candidates and their running mates for the 2020 election. Uh, each layer will be representative of, in order, Mike Pence, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, and. Uh, and you're about the president-elect. Uh, right now, I just finished my, my, uh, okay, so for, I, I thought Mark Pence was a very white guy, but the whitest thing, tuna casserole. His lair will have tuna casserole. I thought I had mayo, but turns out I don't have mayo, but what I do have is Chick-fil-A sauce. No. <laughs> I also want to point out that there's an Easter egg in my Mike Pence area. There's a single raisin there to represent the fly that landed on his pants. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> I like that one. Shout out to Bait Fly. Uh, the the, the, the memes the memes were dang. Um, it'll be mostly chicken because uh, he's too cowardly to accept the results. <laughs> wow. And nice, nice. The, uh, Call him out. Call him out. Arrange it in the shape of a uh, semicircle to represent his iconic mega. Uh, then the, the third layer will be based on Kamala Harris. Um, it will be. My original intention, guys, was for it to have non bread and Jamaican jerk chicken to represent her uh, as a tribute to your Indian and Jamaican roots. Uh, but I couldn't find non bread, so I just settled for pita. And I couldn't find Jamaican jerk chicken, which would have been my strange ingredient. So I had to settle for Hawaiian chicken from one stuff. But it kind of makes sense because her nickname is Phony Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, the, the Joe Biden layer. Um, I, I will try to recreate a Delaware staple food called Scrapple. Uh, I love Scrapple. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Biden <laughs> Delaware. Um, I'm going to try to recreate it here. But I also brought some animal crackers. And I will pick out the sheep and put them in that menu. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep, Sleepy Joe. Sleepy <laughs> Joe. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you sleepy. So, yeah, everyone's getting, getting made fun of. Uh, the, both the candidates, both the running mates. <laughs> that's what I said. The 2020 election. Ungodly combination. There we go. Look at that. First layer, easy. Done. I'm out here. FYI, the, the name of my sandwich is. Chinga tu madre, COVID. That's aggressive. I like it. In caps. All caps. I was having some trouble hearing Gilbert earlier. Oh, shit. Uh, that's, that's 2028 summed up in the, in the sentence. Yeah. I'm having trouble hearing yeah. so-and-so. Oh, hey, my God, God, bro. My, my <laughs> least favorite one. <laughs> like, I get it. Maybe, like, the first week or two. Hell, I'll give you I'll give you the whole month, but bro, we're in December. The, we've been using Zoom since March. Like mm. you should know when you're on mute and when you're not on mute. Right. Out here for like ten minutes and I think my Uber driver is like uh getting the dog to the uh, I can't hear your dog. Flag him down, flag him down. I'll talk to Gil remember remember we were San Antonio for Halloween? Yeah. I didn't realize this until much later. The Uber Eats I ordered from Chick-fil-A was thirty-five dollars. What the fuck? Like when I ordered it, there was a surge in people ordering Uber Eats, so they did one one point five times. Oh no, man! So you know what? I took that back. No shout-outs to Uber Eats. 
So you guys saw what happened with Cyberpunk? That it got pulled from the PlayStation stores? Because the game, I the game couldn't saw. run? I saw. Uh, I have the game. Who's that has it? Yeah. yeah. It's not that bad. Uh, I would say it's equivalent to like Spider-Man 4 in terms of like amount of content. But like it was advertised as so much more than that. Oh, so are you going to get the refund or not? Nah, I'm just gonna play the game and then just wait for the bu- the the so patches to come through. A lot of people have gotten COVID at this point, so they're like not as scared of getting it. I guess. Yeah. yeah. How, how do y'all feel about that? Do you feel like people are going out more now or less now? Oh, definitely a lot more. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people are going out a lot more. I mean, Bilber straight up went to San Antonio. <laughs> Yeah. I never thought I was going to see that, and I'm happy you did. That was a fun weekend. Hey, once you unmask, you never go back. Third layer's coming up. Oh, yeah. Rip. <laughs> What's, that? What's your favorite takeout in L.A.? Uh, there's, there's a lot of them that are, like, really close by. And I guess my favorite, I'm going to be honest with you, a classic Burger King. It's just really good. It's just a good burger. Really? Dude. That's surprising. Because, yeah. I mean, um, I, have B- I have BK on my lower tier of fast food restaurants. Me too, I think bro. You should, you should reconsider these lists, guys. I feel like if you <laughs> sat down, if you sat down, honestly, if you sat down and tried, like, McDonald's, Burger King, Whataburger, Wendy's, uh, In-N-Out, and Burger and Burger King. I don't know if I already said that. Basically, if you try them all at the same time, we rank them, and I think you'll be surprised that Burger King is pretty high up there in quality. I don't know, man. Maybe in LA, not in Texas, though. All right, guys, look at my sandwich. I think this might be my best sandwich to date. Very good. Who would have known? Who would have known? Not me, dude. Did I correctly when you said you tried Scrabble? I do like Scrapple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Scrapple's like a like a bit of a kind of Yeah, very much East Coast. Um, I got I learned I learned about it through my ex girlfriend, who who just told me one day like, hey, do you want like some kind of like assorted pig parts like into like a kind of loaf that you cut up and you grill? And I was like, that sounds not appetizing at first, but I definitely had like different kinds of things like that, like tripas. So I was like, I'm down. And it's surprisingly good. It is. It is. Um, hey, Jose, so, so now that you lived in both coasts, both West Coast and East Coast, what's the best coast? Oh, boy. I'm so glad you asked me that question. <laughs> what's the best coast, I'm, man? I'm, I got to know. I'm 100% the person to talk to about this. If we don't take COVID into account, uh-huh. um, West Coast has more pleasant weather overall, right. more, more liberal um, progressive stuff going on it, because it's just, if we take the entire West Coast, that's four states, like three states of California, Oregon, and Washington versus the shit show of like the North. If you go 20 minutes in one direction, you're suddenly in a different state. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love kind of like the collection of states over there, kind of like how you can do so many things in different places and each place kind of has its vibe. And like, there's definitely a vibe. And the East Coast versus the West Coast, I think it's like more preppy, more like, uh, d- depends where you go. I guess New York is a little bit more like active and like uh, young business oriented and like people like managing to like follow their career passions and stuff. Also, DC is very active in terms of engaging young adults to, to, to act in big roles. Overall, though, it's like they respect a lot of education. They respect a lot of like... Uh, successful businesses and stuff west coast it's a little bit more laid back like you're you can do whatever you want and like make it into a business where like if you decide i'm going to pursue like acting or like some kind of other arts oriented career you can still be pretty big and successful in doing that and the passion comes across a lot more than like business oriented success or the traditional business oriented success stories um i don't know like Honestly, there's like more parks and more like, more bit, like each place kind of has like their own outdoors scene also. There's a lot of like desert life, a lot of like national parks in California. A lot of it's owned by the government. Um, you have on the East Coast, you have the Appalachian Mountains and just like different kinds of trails and like, tradi- I don't want to say traditional, but like original outdoors that are still preserved if you like go out and search for it. 
I think Gilbert can agree with me there, especially like in Massachusetts or like in Pennsylvania. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think my answer is too big here, but I feel like if, if I had to like narrow it down, it, they're almost incomparable because it's, it's so different in terms of scope and what we're actually comparing here. I personally like the East Coast better, but see, the West Coast has its merits. Well, uh, I'm going to say that you're wrong. It was a trick question. The Gulf Coast <laughs> is the best coast. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. You set me up. <laughs> There we go. Jesus Christ, hey, hey, Abraham, you like beating your beat? <laughs> he's, he's beating his meat, bro. He's beating his meat. I'm, I'm done, by the way, guys. I'm done too. Like my sandwich has been ready. I'm, I'm still halfway done. there. I'm almost done. I got the first layer done, so I'm working on the on the milanesa, and then I just have to melt the ingredient, and then secret, and that's it. I'm I'm a, I'm filling up the milanesa with mustard. What's the one thing you missed the most about pre-quarantine? You know, the pre-quarantine days. Yes. People, hanging out with people, like breathing, hanging the out of people that our buddies are breathing, making eye contact with their actual eyes, not pixels on a screen. Yes, I was gonna say going to stadiums, like I'm having sex, guys. But all right, just me. <laughs> I mean, I just need to melt this and then I'm done. Okay, Gilbert, <laughs> would you be down to do the ultimate Gilbert adventure? What's the ultimate Gilbert adventure, Javi? Where we go on a road trip to visit Jose. Hell oh, yeah! And, and vlog it all. Hell yeah! <laughs> I want to. I want to join. <laughs> yeah. The, then we bring, the, we bring you back. <laughs> go see you. We go pick you when up. Are, when are you trying to go? We could. I mean, after quarantine, or I don't know if we do it during quarantine. I don't know. So like mid fall. Yeah. Oh, that would be actually pretty nice weather. Do you guys think vaccine discrimination is going to become a thing? Yes. Vaccine discrimination? Yes. And what's I, that? I so. Like, say, like, uh, and discrimination, like, I don't mean that in, like, a negative connotation or whatever. Yeah. But say you're a cruise company, say you're, like, Caribbean Cruise Lines or something, and in order for people to come onto your cruise, they have to present to you proof of, like, that they've been vaccinated and are now immune, and that it's for, like, the safety of, like, everyone on the cruise. And I that could so. also transfer to like flights or to if you want to stay in a certain hotels, something like that. Cruise, I think, is like the most reasonable example for that because you're going to be like on a boat with a lot the same people for a certain period of time. Because um, I, I know even like some companies right now, you have to get tested every so often, or if you want to do like a plant visit, you need to get tested before you can go in. And they'll do like the rapid test, like the 10 minute one. Um, like that's, that's already a thing. So my my question is like, will that go further? Like, hey, now you need to have like proof of vaccine and like you got it on a certain day because that's already a thing for like public schools and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And those are government owned, so like they kind of have that right. But my question is, do private companies have all like also have that right? Absolutely, hundred percent. As soon as like one company decides to do it and that becomes like the standard, then like a bunch of other companies will kind of follow suit. You know do what you I know? hope? I, I hope that the masks never go away. I do enjoy masks and I do feel a lot safer when people are wearing masks. Like you know, like in Japan when people like are in the two, like on the metro, they're all wearing masks, and I think it's just a courtesy, common courtesy to the to your neighbor. Question though, and feel free to remove this from the final cut if it makes me look too bad. Um, <laughs> But if you know how like there's always like this difference in like the way that a girl looks on Tinder and then in real life. Yeah. Yeah. What if <laughs> what if you meet a girl out in a bar, you guys are both wearing masks or whatever, and then you go back to her place and oh. then pulls down the mask and then <laughs> she's <just> yeah. <laughs> like surprise. <laughs> yeah, if you make it that far Odds are you're gonna go through. I've, I've never met a man who walked out from a, a chance like that. <laughs> Dude, that episode of Mandalorian, man, it was so good. Like it hit all the right notes, man. Grogu, Gro Gro Space Pikachu is the best thing that happened in 2020. Space Pikachu, yeah, he's pretty iconic. Yeah, dude. He's... For 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 those, this this is going on YouTube, and this is our time capsule. 
for like a year and a half, Grogu didn't have a name. People called him Baby Yoda or the child. Yeah. We didn't know that his name was Grogu. And now his name is Grogu. And I love the name Grogu. And I just say Grogu every chance I get. Cause it's yeah, Grogu is very fitting. He lives like a Grogu. Grogu. Like I look at him and I was like, you know what? You do look like Grogu. I'm happy you were in Grogu. Yeah, he's Grogu. You know what I watched today right after watching Mandalorian? Okay. Uh, episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith. Nice. Ooh. And I was like, dude, this movie gets way too much hate for what it is. It's actually a pretty fun movie. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I love that movie. Things, bro. Yeah, I, I have know. a high ground, Anakin. Yeah, dude. General. <laughs> no, there's no <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> and I don't know, like, I was always a big uh. fanboy of General Grievous, and I think General Grievous is very menacing. You were supposed to be the chosen one. <laughs> General. They were supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them. <laughs> yeah, that movie is so cool. I love it. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Yeah, dude. It's because when you see Anakin's conversion to the dark side. <laughs> I don't know. Pa- I don't know what Padme was on, dude. Padme was like, bro, like this guy, he murdered the whole Sand people. Like, this guy's a clear psycho, dude. Like, how do you save this guy, dude? You're breaking my heart. <laughs> yeah, I was like, bro, your heart should have been broken like two movies ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The, the Anakin kills the, the kids at the Jedi. The younglings? Time. Yeah, he killed the younglings, dude. And then the, and all the memes, oh, dude, about that to, scene. What are we going to do? Uh, <laughs> really Gilbert, you know this movie so well. Last <laughs> <laughs> time you watched it. All right, boys, I finished my sandwich. What's we that? ready? We ready for I'm this? I'm ready. Right, I'm good. Gilbert, you Ah, uh, yes. The negotiator. I'm done, yeah. <laughs> this is my twenty. Right? Everyone, everyone, show your sandwich on on the screen right now. Go. Oh, oh mine's mine's fully built. This, this is the. Should I go to the table now? This is the pin. The code infection. Ah. I'm ready. Put, 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 the the put some Cheetos in this bitch. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. Ah. So look at the size of this monster. It's not bad. It's pretty good. The bread, I toasted my bread with butter. So it, the bread is already pretty crunchy. And then the Cheetos and the Frosted Flakes, like I'm getting some crunch sauce in my mouth right now. Dude, not gonna lie, the, the sweetness from the Frosted Flakes, it's kind of good. Mm. It like, it goes well with the, with the bacon. Yeah. Yeah, same here with my animal cracker crumbs on the pork chop. Guys. My sandwich is beast. Oh yeah. Is it badass? Is the cheese still really hot, bro? No. <laughs> I, I let it cool. I let it cool. Oh, yeah. But the spice from the cheese, the jalapenos, the taste of the paella, the milanesa, they all oh. Are you good at taking heat? Do you yeah. like hot things of that? Uh, if it's not in if it's not in liquid form, then yes. RIP of it I'm toilet tomorrow. It's it's not a it's not a story the Jedi would tell you. <laughs> it's gonna be a worthy shit. <laughs> nice. Top quote. Top Someone's quote. gonna be fighting his own fist in the toilet. <laughs> I have so many like different tastes at the same time. There she is. Look at her. Just hanging out. Wait, have you all seen the trick I can do where I can carry her in one hand? This this will make your video go viral. <laughs> the, does she know what she's doing? Yeah, she does. She she bounces perfectly also. Oh. And then here oh. comes the perfectly cut scream. The amount of trust that this dog has with you. Yeah. Oh, dude, you have no idea. <laughs> she's just sitting yeah, like, like, a, I, like a plush teddy bear. I can pick her up. I can like... Throw her, flip her around, and she's, she's okay. Just like, yeah, she's just perfectly still because she knows I'll never drop her. I'm starting to feel the wildfire in my mouth. Mmm, the wildfire. The Australian. What are you, what are you drinking? Wildfires. Uh, tropical punch. Mmm. <laughs> the which which one? The uh. Been made. Oh, okay. good. Highly recommend. It's really. Jose, I like what's up? How many earthquakes have you been through so far? I think two. Two. Damn. Yeah. Both of them. The first time I was like, what was that? Like, was that just a car passing by really close to our <laughs> building? 
<laughs> and nope, yeah. it was it was it was the ground shaking and like literally moving our our apartment. Wow. The second time that it happened, it was like four a.m. and it literally woke me up. And like it, I woke up and the ground was shaking, like the ground of our of our apartment was shaking. And I was like, this isn't supposed to happen. The ground is not supposed <laughs> to. Be. Also, just like I just want this to go on record, kimchi and peanut butter don't go together. Oh no. Olapio? Not surprised about that. Weird. So, any interesting combinations of foods or tastes on your end? That is, this might be the best sandwich I've ever eaten in my life. Yeah, same here. Uh, Spanish paella and milanesa is is the go-to mix. That's what it sounds like. like. I, mean, I, I think I just probably disrespected the the mid-Atlantic states by combining animal crackers and pork chops and calling it scrapple, but. I like the taste. <laughs> it's pretty good. Remind me, you were trying to make your own scrapple? Yes. Okay, now I understand. It looked nothing like the scrapple I've had. <laughs> now I'm at the Trump layer. Chicken and bacon. Oh boy. Big news, you're not at the Trump layer. Why is, why is the Trump layer the chicken and bacon? Uh, well, it's fake news. It's chicken because he's too cowardly to accept the results. And uh, the the bacon was arranged in like a semicircle to represent his mega hat. I think <laughs> an impossible burger would have also been a good an impossible burger, yeah. a good substitute because it pretends to be something else, <laughs> even though it's it's made out of something. Yeah. Damn. I'm pretty close. I still need a bit more though. Me too. Go where go where might not finish it. Mm. Hey, but real talk, the Mike Pence layer is the most delicious one of all. Tuna mixed with Chick-fil-A sauce instead of mayonnaise. Chick-fil-A sauce. That's pretty that good. Does it taste like gay conversion therapy? Electroshock. Stop being gay. <laughs> Stop being gay. Well, I was researching for my sandwich mm -hmm. earlier. I was going through like, the pandemics the world has been through. Mm -hmm. And bro, like people would just die from random and stuff, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like there was a an Ebola crisis in in Athens, like way yeah. back. They, they, they couldn't explain it. They were like, dude, we just got cursed. Like <laughs> the gods got pissed <laughs> up at us. And <laughs> oh my god. People back in the day, they lived different lifestyles, man. Yeah, they thought a uh, schizophrenia was a demonic possession. They yeah. Yep. There was like multiple black plagues. Like the bonic plague was around for a while. Now it's extinct. <laughs> How does one win a war? Like at what point does it just like end? Because I, I was thinking about the other day. Like take for example World War Two or even like the American Civil War, right? It was fought North versus South. Like we know the North won because we're like 200 years after or whatever. Right. But at at the time, like, when did, how, is it arbitrary? Like, oh, after this this battle was so badass, and like now we won, and like our ideals are like now pushed hmm. onto you, and like you can't have slaves anymore. And also, like, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have news back then. I'm, I'm guessing there's people that found out like way later, and like oh. still had slaves. Like, how? Like, did it just take a really really long time, and were battles still being mm -hmm. fought after like the Decisive oh. battle or something like yeah, uh, a good I can, a good example is the Battle of New Orleans, mm. okay. um, when uh, when Andrew Jackson was was uh, led against the the British, and uh, they already signed a treaty. But Andrew Jackson he did not know that they signed the treaty, so he's like, let's go fuck up the British people in New Orleans, and they did. And, then, <laughs> like, oh, and they British. did. They were just like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. Nah, Man, Andrew Jackson was just a motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Gary, dude. Shady motherfucker, bro. Yeah, dude, old hickory. Bro. Dude, his nickname was Old Hickory. That's not a, that's not a nice nickname. After <laughs> uh, the war is won, when uh, one of the leaders, it's ultimately the decision of the, the top general. Who, um, once one of the leaders says, you know, um, if we just keep on going, they're. It's just not going to be productive. We're going to lose lives. We're going to lose resources. We're going to lose money. We surrender. I think to, to answer more Lash's question, with another anecdote, 
there was like this general this major some captain during the vietnam war who was like fuck it i'm gonna hide out in in this jungle in vietnam and i'm gonna wait for like any of like the opposition to come through and i'm gonna kill them like black ops <laughs> super secret i'm gonna be like by myself in the jungle sustaining on the land killing any vietnamese people that i see and when the war was over nobody could find this dude and nobody could get in contact with him and he was just out in the middle of the jungle by himself and <laughs> killing vietnamese people and then i and i'm not shitting you on this number like 30 to 40 years pass he's still out there like killing people and like still like thinking he's fighting this war and people are like what the fu- how are you still out there um but any- so like that's like one example of like unless the information gets distributed on a, on a bigger scale, i.e. through like mail back in the day or like some kind of courier or messenger, messenger, people didn't know what the fuck was going on and they would just keep going and like in their individual insular battles yeah. until they thought they won themselves. Yeah, I feel yeah. like maybe back in the days, like it used to be like ideological wars or like wars based off of like determination of divine providence. Like, I, yeah. I want to go to war because God told me to go to war and like, this is what I need to do. Or like, I need to expand my land or I need to increase the riches. That's Old Testament uh, of fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Crusades, man. <laughs> the Crusades are a big example of that. Like they were like, fuck it. That's our land. Let's take it back. Everyone it's, rally yeah. up. Dude, that's so nuts. Like, wow. Yeah. Like that idea was like, bro, that's, my, I've never been there, but it's my land. <laughs> like, <laughs> this voice in my head, a dude from the sky told me to come kill you. If Risk had resources like Catan? Yeah. yeah. Or the, the one that we played at, at Gilbert's house, Battle of... Uh, Rokugan. Rokugan. Bakugan. Oh, I'm a lovely geisha. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo's the most densely populated city in the world. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I did that's not true. know that. It's Over like Tokyo New Delhi. Tokyo has so many. Has yeah. so, Tokyo has so many districts or cities, uh, if you can call them. Well, they're you can think of them as cities, but they're called districts. Or, um, but they're also they're all packed together into one giant city. Yeah. So, gotcha. Gotcha. So, to do that, I want to go because I mean the the Olympics gonna be over there too. Like it's next year. Yeah, bro, I'm down to go. I mean, playing playing. <laughs> Um, planes are gonna be cheap still. Vamos, okay. Let's go. Let's do it. They're gonna pay I'm us down, to go. dude. If yeah, it, dude. <laughs> if it, if it's in cherry blossom season, that's that works even. Oh there. hell yeah! You know what came up on my YouTube recommendations the other night? What? It was apparently this author from Japan that he tried to lead a takeover of the um, their government. And he wanted to instill like the old like samurai way, mm. and um, he was unsuccessful, so he committed to puku. He disposed of himself in the traditional way. Yes. And wow. he had his followers. And his followers were like, bro, like, don't do this, man. It's like, bro, like, this is, this is the way. Like, he literally <laughs> said, this is the way. This is, this is my ninja way. way. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he committed to Puku. And then, you know, to Puku, like, you stab yourself. And then you have another boy, like, come and chop your head off. Oh. I well, the guy that was chopping his head off, he couldn't, like, he tried. And he tried four times and he couldn't do it. Oh, so, oh. Imagine that, like that sucks. Craziest video you guys have seen in the past 48 hours, go. That was a video. <laughs> okay, this crazy thing that came out in my YouTube algorithm, it, it, it was like a, this guy that was interviewing a girl and he was like, hey, so how do you nag your boyfriend? And he was like, oh, um, I don't know. Like uh, if he has a dream, you like insult it, I guess. <laughs> Like, like, just going like straight up into detail as to how to like break down, break down a man to his core. And what I thought, oh my god, that is not nagging, that is uh, sociopathic bullshit. What are they <laughs> you? That's Dude. bully. Yeah, uh, I was gonna go for like a little tame one, like you know, so it's like Yoda high on ketamine doing uh, donuts in his Honda <laughs> Civic. <laughs> Have you seen that one? No, I haven't. Dude, that was no. hilarious. <laughs> I was into the group chat because. It, it, I saw it from a meme. It was like nobody YouTube algorithm at three a.m. <laughs> it wasn't recommend, recommended. <laughs> the like, weirdest thing I probably ever watched is like Doctor Pimple Popper, Doctor Sandra, oh no. or whatever. Oh, yeah. but, but like, dude, those it's just so get fascinating. like millions it's so of fascinating. views. Like, I am, I am not the only one. I am not the only one. No, I'm there with you, man. I'm there with you. So that's why I, I watched it. 
Yeah. There's something so satisfying. It's like watching people like pop bubble wrap, but like on Dude, skin. right? <laughs> yeah. On someone's it's like skin. You're, you're removing an imperfection <laughs> from someone's skin. Like that's just dank. Things that I get uh, when I scroll too far is is stuff like uh, the tw- uh, twenty weirdest things caught on camera, real life stuff like that. And then it shows, like, <laughs> and it shows like this colossal like beast that like like shadows like like the state the size of the state of Texas or something like that. And I'm just like oh, I'm gonna click that. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you watch a lot of like ghost adventures and and like paranormal stuff, right? I watch a lot of like uh, like paranormal uh, sci-fi stuff, and, and then yeah, uh, yeah. and then so- sometimes like some conspiracy th- conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Yeah, one of them. Came out like so fucked up because I watch a large range. I watch from like yeah, same Doka, and I have a bunch of Doka, and of course, naturally. Um, what's it called? I watch a lot of soccer highlights from like back in this back in the day. Then uh... I watch Doctor Bo Hightower, and then also music, and then I, I love Jim Carrey. And like I, I love slapstick humor, so I, I have a lot of Eric Andre recommendations. And I think my YouTube is like, bro, this guy is all over the place, man. I just give him, <laughs> let's just throw him random bones and see if it sticks. And usually they do stick. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's. Oh yeah, that's I'm, like I'm spinning like ballers. You are seething with jealousy. I am. <laughs> yeah, seething. <laughs> seething with jealousy. Oh, I, I want to get into conspiracy oh, theories. That, that guy's pretty cool. Yo, I have a I have a picture of like all the conspiracy theories that people that are out there right now. Hold on. Right. Bro, my favorite you. one, my favorite one so far of all time has to be the fake moon landing. That's been my oh, yeah. favorite conspiracy because it's it's it's, it's so been wild. Debunked. It's been debunked, but like the the lengths people go to say like, bro, we didn't go to the moon, man. Like it's not my third my third one is that Stanley Kubrick directed the moon landing, <laughs> and that he has Easter eggs in the. 2001 Space Odyssey, saying that, bro, like, we didn't do this. Like, that was me. And that's why he died. And that's one of my (laughs) all-time... Wait, 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 wait. There was a couple steps I think you skipped there. (laughs) They're saying he got silenced. The the, the NASA silenced him, dude. Or some shit like that. You know, pretty outrageous stuff. And there was this guy, I don't know if you heard about, there's, like, this guy that goes and bothers, like, Neil Armstrong and um, Buzz Aldrich. And he goes to them with a Bible, and he says, like, guys, you got to swear on this Bible that you went to the moon. And they won't do it. Buzz and uh, Neil will be like, no, we're not going to do it. So this guy, he says that that is his proof that we never went to the moon. Because <laughs> these guys once were on the Bible that they went to the moon. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the specifics. I'm not saying I'm one of these conspiracy theories. I'm saying that that's, oh, okay. that's a conspiracy theory. They're saying that people will get, like, uh, abducted here on Earth. And they will be taken to a to Mars to basically like talk with the aliens and stuff, and just kind of like figure out some kind of like an agreement between humans and aliens. Um, but like that's happening on Mars right now as we speak. I have an issue with that, and that What's is that issue? why would you go all the way to Mars if you? I mean, if you already came to Earth, then this this negotiate here, man. Like, why the <laughs> hell are we going? To, we can't even. We don't even have the equipment to go to Mars. You know what's exciting? Now that we're in, on like subjects about space and stuff, that yeah. Brownsville will be the gateway to Mars. Yes, yeah. hell yeah! That's exciting. Like it's like, yeah, that's us. <laughs> we made it, boys. <laughs> that's kind of wild. I love the Bermuda Triangle. Like all the conspiracy theories in that, um, yeah. the disappearance yeah. of Amelia Earhart. Mm. I'm actually, I'm actually upset. Oh well, I have two two comments now that you bring up Amelia Earhart. I'm yeah. upset at how little the Bermuda Triangle actually played a part in my life as a whole. Yeah. Uh, first. Sorry, that was just my hot take on the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the Bermuda Triangle and like, uh, what's, what's it called? Sand? It's quicksand. Quicksand. <laughs> Quicksand. When quicksand turned out not to be that big a deal, I was upset. I was like, why did I spend all that time preparing and figuring out what I was going to do when it's just not going to be part of my life? You have to float on your back. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like pedal your way towards the, the edge of it. They, uh, they actually found her plane, I think, somewhere like in the Pacific Island. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, they finally did. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's like apparently like a picture that she took with someone that someone took of her when she was there, but like her name and face never got out because nobody in that part of the world knew who she was, and she couldn't contact anyone, and 
the the theory is that she was just kind of like stranded there and like eventually died there and like nobody was able to like figure it out because you know they were never able to like place her name her face in that location i see yeah i remember when i was uh in high school uh i looked up a bunch of Amelia Earhart like conspiracy videos and like what ha- I was like I was I was like researching like looking through the net like what happened to this lady can I fix it <laughs> like that that's the, that's how I would spend my time in, in my house like after I would do my homework and it's like I need to find out about the Bermuda Triangle I need to find out about the Area 51 I need to find out about the <laughs> yeah the same dude uh, that was me middle school dude I would go to the library and exclusively I would check out all of these like close encounters of aliens and stuff like that and the one that freaked me out was uh, how if you got too close to like knowing the truth, you will be you will be visited by the Men in Black. And like I broke one. Like the the real Men in Black or what? The real Men in Black, you know, the ones that are based off the movie, like the movies based off of. Yeah. And I broke one time. I was in my apart. I was in my in Brownsville. I was in my apartment. You know, just reading these books. And I remember I see like a car pull up, and people come out like you know dressed in you know, and it's not all black suits, you know. But they were wearing like the ties and everything, yeah. and they knocked on my door, and I was like, "Bro, I know too much. So I'm going away." Oh, no. Turns out, turns out they were Mormons. <laughs> nah. <laughs> if that earthers say that Australia doesn't exist, and everybody that they say is Australian oh is a paid actor from, by oh NASA. My gosh. NASA pays. Why? <laughs> why is it that specific? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to I'm going to play a little game with you guys. It's it's going to be quick, I promise, but this yes. is kind of like a game I used to play where you have to say like three things that you think cannot be related in any way and the other person or people in this case have to kind of like say one thing that connects all these three things. Wow, I love oh, it. Oh, I like this game. A dolphin, dolphin, a tennis ball, and a feather. Can you guys relate them in any way? Like come up with some kind of explanation, simple, like nothing too complicated. But like a, uh, an uh, explanation that the, these three things can be related. It's easy, bro. At SeaWorld, where they do all those like trainings and stuff, like you got, you got, you got the animals. Like what, when I was in the Canary Islands, I went to this like zoo that they had, and they're training whales, they're training dolphins, they're training birds. So, bro, you just you're you're in a you're you are a trainer. You got a tennis ball in your hand. You got a feather from the bird you were just like giving a show, and like there's a dolphin flipping flopping around, like. Too easy, bro. Dude, you know what I had in mind? I had one that it had a t- it was like a tennis tournament mm. in some Caribbean or I don't know where dolphins are in the like in Florida, and somebody just did a bad serve, and the bird flew by and just got smacked, and it ended up <laughs> on the water with dolphins. <laughs> That's the way I would feel. Completely different. <laughs> I know the answer to this one. Super Mario World. There's dolphins in that game. There's the the, the, the group of football players that throw like tennis they balls, do? Yeah. and you fly with a feather. Super Mario World Connect Ball Three. That's 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 a very good one, also, dude. That's very well done. <laughs> Alright, I'm missing Abraham. Abraham, how are you? Abraham left. Abraham ran away. <laughs> he went to get the. He went to go but get that's... the wall to connect the dot wall. The, the post-it <laughs> like... notes. Yeah, the, the post-it string, note. the string and so the uh, thumbtack. Yeah, the Olympics. I was like from sitting in Philadelphia. Who is Pepe? <laughs> I looked everywhere. <laughs> Pepe Silva. Pepe Silva. <laughs> Dude, that's still my fault in first show. It's undefeated. I've seen it at least ten times, man. Every single episode. God, what a good show. Uh, Jose, a good show. Uh, out of curiosity, is there like an actual answer that links a dolphin, a tennis ball, and a feather? No, I, I. I came I, like i don't want to say i came up with it i might have seen it somewhere i definitely think that i just thought of it as like a thought experiment one day and i'm like hey let's just kind of like do some like abstract thinking here and see like what we come up with and so like i remember playing it on like a bus ride home from like SciTech, and you know it was just something that keep me entertained and just kind of like think back and forth i think it definitely it, it definitely touches on this like creative thinking or like correlation um you know, thought exercises that Javi was talking about where like you can put things together that like you think initially have no basis or like no comparison and then you will find something that kind of connects them. Imagination, man. Yeah, if anyone wants to come up with one more, let's go ahead and try it out. All right, let's see. Um, Let's try 
Salt. Okay. Russia. Okay. And global warming. Easy. Um, when you have the like miners, like salt miners in Russia causing global warming. Wow, I, I thought the exact same thing. I legitimately thought it was like, well, not something in, in Russia, but you know, Russia contracting people to go mine, <laughs> go go to salt mines, and that causes global warming. <laughs> yeah, like the machines there, like they take up too much oil, and it's causing global warming. Mine, mine was uh, the the Russian salt miners were trapped in the cave because of rising sea levels due to global warming <laughs> kind of like those Damn. those thailand kids that got yeah. stuck that one time <laughs> the one where Elon Musk yeah. was like, that navy feels a pedophile and everyone was like what the fuck <laughs> 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 you guys remember that that was really oh. weird right that was yeah. super weird it's, it's one of the weirdest pieces of like internet drama that like didn't have to happen but elon musk was just like i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot my shot oh yeah. i remember that yeah 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 <laughs> It was like the, the Navy SEALs saved these like Thai Thai kids. Thai kids, yes. And there was there's like a video of them like carrying them out of the cave or whatever. And Elon Musk was like, Yeah, that dude's a pedophile. And then he was like, Dude, bro, what? <laughs> the correlation, man. Correlation is a different causation. The correlation, bro. Elon Musk, that guy's a force to be reckoned with. Like he, he, like remember that, that one day where he's like, Hey guys, uh, don't you think that the Tesla stock is a little bit too high? Yeah. <laughs> he single-handedly took down his own stock. <laughs> my my favorite one was where he was like, "Hey, Tesla stock is gonna be 420 tomorrow." Lol. Our, our, no, what, what what was it? It was like our earnings were 420 million or something about 420, and that was technically like an insider secret. Trading. So we yeah. got into shitload of trouble with like the the SEC and like the the, the Fed and stuff because they're like. Bro, like that's insider trading and he's like that was for the memes bro hey for the banter man he was and and andaba quedando con grimes and she's a big flathead so (laughs) he was like trying to impress her or something by saying 420 hey man i would impress grimes too (laughs) worth it i say it's worth it did everyone finish their sandwich i did yeah Yeah. oh hell yeah 100 percent completion rate for really that's a first yeah, the COVID confection. Let's give it yeah. a round of applause. Wow. Well done. Well done, guys. I mean, I'm impressed. Good boy, lads. I mean, good job, lads. And, the, and this time, it was my, my sandwich actually tasted good compared yeah. to Mine the, too. the past Mine too. half years. <laughs> hey, um, I'm going to stop the recording right now, but uh, well, we can still uh, chat and hang out afterwards. Oh, for uh, sure. Okay. Hey, to all the, the crazy mad lads who are viewing us on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this. This banter, this chat, this conversation. We have some lovely themes, some thought provoking questions with great company. Hey, I love you. I love you guys. Love you, Future Jose. Like, like and subscribe down below. Yeah. Hit, hit that, if that subscribe button is red, smash that shit. If the like button is not oh. blue, smash that shit. Yeah, dude. Ring, ring that bell. Ring that bell. Yeah, get, get that notification bell so that YouTube knows that you want to stay up to date with all of Professor Gig's latest content. <laughs> That's it. We're out of here. Hope you all have a fantastic, fantastic day. Kick ass. Keep on keeping on. Nope. Nope. Uh, you fuck. You messed uh, it up. Yeah. You messed it up. Just sign <laughs> off. Just sign off, dude. <laughs> you do it, Gilbert. Take the reins. How do, Gilbert, how does it go? How does it go, Gilbert? It goes, take care and kick, kick ass. ass. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh, you, you gotta do the pose. It's take care and take care. Take care. Oh yeah, the the staple, the staple. Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shout out. <laughs>